O, C, N, minus. Okay? First step, valence electrons. Always the first step. O is 6, carbon is 4, nitrogen is 5, and then plus one more because it has a minus one charge. So that's 16. Okay, there's a couple problems here. One is, there's three atoms. What one do you want to put in the center? Where do you put the other ones? Whatever. So, any guesses? What would you like to put in the center? Carbon. Carbon, yeah. You too? Yeah, I definitely agree. Uh, carbon usually is in the center. If you didn't try this and you tried something else, you would see it would not be as good as what we're going to get for this answer. Okay, so carbon's in the middle. Now let's, uh, we've got 16. 2, 4. So 4 of 16 so far. Uh, 4, uh, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Okay. And now what do you think? Yeah, we gotta do some double bonds because that carbon is messed up. Yeah, wherever you want to tell me. Yeah, which one? Both. Both. Yeah, you oh, can well. Both. well, one at a time. Uh, nitrogen. First. Nitrogen? Okay, I'll just take randomly that one. And you're right, this is not enough because uh, carbon still does not have an octet, so we continue the same process. We loop. So now where do you want to take it from? Oxygen. Okay, I'm going to redraw this one, okay? So, the minus sign, put that plus one right there. Okay. So, now you want to do, you said from the oxygen? Okay. Is that okay? Okay, formal charges. How about the oxygen first? Neutral, yeah, it's in column six. It has six points of attachment. Carbon. Nitrogen. Yeah, column four, four points of attachment. One, two, three, four. Nitrogen. Negative one charge. You got it. Because it's in column five. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it has a minus one charge. Which is correct. We should have the minus one charge. Uh, yeah, and we can put a. So we do this. For our final answer, we do that. So I label this formal charge is different than the overall charge. Uh, that's good. That's a pretty good one. Are there any others? Triple. Yeah, I should consider what's called what kind of structure. Uh, when I consider a triple, you know, something else. When I move electrons around, there's a certain name for that. Yeah. It starts with an R. Ends with an resonance. Resonance. <laughs> you got it. I'm considering now resonance structures, which, to get a full credit, you'd want to include resonance structures. Okay, let's try this one. Uh, formal charge on nitrogen. This has got to do this all the time. All you got to really used to this stuff. You're going to do this an OCHEM a lot, a lot, a lot, so you're really used to it. It's neutral. Yeah, this is neutral. It's in five. It has five around it. Carbon. Neutral. Yeah, oxygen. Negative one charge. Yeah, it had to be here. I mean, if it's not in other places, it had to be here. One of them has to have a minus one charge. These are resonance structures. I'd indicate this by a double barbed arrow like that. Those are both acceptable answers. I would consider one slightly better than the other. Do you know which one that is? No. The triple bond. What? This one? Okay, why? I do think this is slightly more stable. There's a particular reason. Polarity? What do you mean by that? Okay. This is negative charge on one side and the triple bond on the other. 
Okay. Yeah, it does have to be right. It does have to be a negative charge. Which one's more electronegative here? Uh, Top one. A nitrogen or oxygen? Uh, well, which um, atom? Is which one? atom? Um, mm -hmm. As an individual, which one is more electronegative? Oxygen. Oxygen. Oh. Thus, I would tend to prefer the minus charge here slightly. But in um, the exam, you'd put both answers. If we asked you to make a preference, you'd slightly prefer the bottom one because the minus charge is on the most electronegative element. That's it. Uh, are there any others? You could consider uh, this. as a possibility. You know, if you're going to take a triple bond one way, might as well try it the other way, too. If you did this, what's the formal charge on oxygen? Positive one. You got it. Positive one. Of the carbon. Neutral. Okay. Nitrogen. Negative two. Yeah, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two minus. What do you think of that one? Near disgusting, yeah. With that minus two charge or a plus two charge, it's horrible. Or um, is there going to be a clue in the question that indicates whether or not it's a polar? Uh, I'm going to teach you next class to tell if something's polar. Basically, if something looks unsymmetric, it is polar. So, this one looks unsymmetric, it is definitely polar. Yeah, It has an unbalanced uh, polar covalent bonds is the essence of it, so it's going to be polar. And you're going to have to be able to determine, given any molecule, is it polar or not polar. Yeah. So is it like going to behave basically like a magnet because it has one negative and one positive? Yeah, I wouldn't say the word magnet, but it'll it behave like a dipole, meaning something with two poles, which a magnet does have that. But it's not necessarily magnetic. Yeah, but it ha makes very interesting physical properties when it has a dipole, which you learn in 2B. Yeah. Uh, it can have, it can, dipoles change boiling points and melting points and stuff like that. Yeah? Um, can you, uh, check why, like, how do you determine how electronegative, uh, element? Uh, how electronegative element is? Yeah. As you go up and to the right on the periodic table, towards fluorine, it gets, becomes more electronegative. 